Bitcoin continues to go up, breaking barriers and resistances. The dollar continues to go down and gold doing nothing. Sorry, Peter Schiff. This and much more coming your way. Stay tuned. The podcast is about to begin. Hello guys, welcome to another FU Money. Today is Friday, almost the end of the week again, just a few days away from the weekly candle close and Bitcoin continues to break barriers. Gold is doing nothing and the dollar is going down as expected. So let's go to the charts and see what's happening almost at the end of this week. So let's start with the price to time model. And here we are a few days after my last video, I had some personal issues to solve, so I wasn't able to record. But here we are again at the price of time model, a new video Friday, and we will see what how the week is looking like. So the price of time model has been very, very uh, close. Uh, the cycle of 2021 is very, very close of the cycle of 2017, the yellow candle pattern here. We are just a few thousand dollars away from being already on track again on top of this one. I really have serious doubts that we will able to get ahead of the 2017 cycle uh, again as we were around here. However, if we continue to go up at the same pace, we will be very, very close of this cycle and probably we could even catch up in one of these retracements that we had during 2017, just before the top. So regarding this, uh, we are still on track. There's nothing to say here, except that we continue to be above the 20 period SMA, the green line on your screens, and the 200 is continuing to go up. All very good uh, bullish and good signs of healthiness of this cycle. So the RSI also continues to go up. We are uh, we had a little glitch here, as you can see, this small retracement over there, but the RSI continues to go up, leaving behind the orange dashed line, which corresponds to the level of the RSI post 75% correction mid-cycle 2013. So regarding the price to time model, all looks good. Uh, if anything changes or that there are major uh, issues with this uh, price of time model, I will again communicate it to you guys. Just a quick look at the total, total market cap here. We are now entering the red zone. So we are now inside the red rectangle of the, um, the Fibonacci retracement that you guys know already how it works. Anything in the middle of these two colors is the dump zone. Everything here is a good taking profit opportunity above the red and below the green is a very good long opportunity to get back into the market. So regarding the total market cap, we continue to go up after a few glitches and after a red triangle here, but the bulls are in complete control of the situation. And as you guys can see, the momentum could not be higher than this. The momentum here, the orange line continues to be on top above all borders and also the sine wave is pointing up at this moment. The bulls are totally in control. You guys can see it here. Uh, sorry. You guys can see it here that the green dots are the bulls, the red dots are the bears and the last time the bears were actually doing something, we had a squeeze and just a small um, after this retracement here to the $28.8 thousand dollars level. After that, the bulls took control of the situation and now we have been just being controlled by the bulls. So regarding the total market cap, everything looks good. We are now above the $2.27 trillion of total market cap for crypto assets. And we are now entering the red zone, which means that probably soon you will have the opportunity to take some profits and secure your positions 
uh, lowering the risk that you are managing right now. So you should take this into account. This is not financial advice, of course, but just a word of warning that probably we could see some retracement here before actually going higher to new all-time highs. So just keep an eye on the total market cap. And of course, in the charts of your respective coins, the ones you hold, so that you can understand what's happening for each individual asset as compared to the total market cap. So right now, I'm just going to wait to uh, just, we are just almost reaching the top of the resistance context, which is the gray box you guys see here, and crossing at the same time the red level. So this will be a very good opportunity to take some profits in case you want to lower the risk of your positions. So that's it, guys. Let's take a look at Bitcoin dominance. Bitcoin dominance is now entering the support context. And we are at 43% of dominance for Bitcoin and 43, let me check again. Yes, 40, no, sorry, this is 41. I was checking it wrong. This is 41.8 and we are now entering the uh, box, the gray box here, which is the support context with a low, uh, maximum low possible, in my opinion, of 37.6% dominance. So we could see a retracement here for previous levels to retest the previous levels around 36 to 39 however the maximum low i could expect here is around 37.6 which is the uh, bottom of the trend channel which is the green zigzag here so let's see how that evolves the uh, upper side of the trend channel however is very very high still and this is around here you guys can see the red zigzag so the, the green zigzag is the bottom of the trend channel. The red zigzag is the, the, the top of the trend channel. So this is uh, the expected values, maximum and, and minimum values for dominance right now. So the lowest value would be around 37.6 or 5. And the top most, uh, the maximum value would be around 58.9 or 59. So these are the values that you should consider for dominance. Right now, I'm expecting that we see lower levels probably entering the 30s, the high 30s percent, uh, tra trying to break the support context here. However, the support really, really uh, will be really strong around the 37.6. So that's it for dominance. Let's now take a look at the MRI strategy and we will start with the month, uh, monthly chart because we just started a new month a few days ago. Uh, so it's important to see what the monthly chart structure is telling us. So right now we started a new monthly candle, the candle of September, and we are starting in a good way. We have the flip of the count on the MRI. So we are now starting a green one, a green one of nine, which could take us very, very far away from this uh, level we are here to the upside of course uh, let's see how the monthly chart evolves but this was a very good uh, reversal of the price action here in the month of July we started to go up again during August we continue to go up and now we just open September and from September opening around 47,000 we are now around 50,700 which is a very, very good start of the month with the number one on the green count. So I'm expecting now that we continue to go up after breaking all the resistances, at least for the monthly chart, which looks very, very bullish to me. But there are, of course, the dangers of a third range boundary close to the all-time high. So around the levels of 56,000, 56 to 60 would be a level where I would expect some more big resistance Probably a third range boundary could form there, but we will check that on the pro indicators chart. So that's it for the monthly. The RSI is almost going into the overbought territory. The MACD continues to show bullishness. The curve is now going up again on the blue line and they are now almost parallel. So the gap is not uh, getting smaller between the blue line and the orange line of the MACD. And also the bars 
are just stopping this curve down and now we have this for this month at least we have this bar which is exactly the same size as the previous month so the macd on the monthly chart is showing some bullish momentum uh so let's see what the weekly chart is telling us right now we are continuing after this small retracement we are continuing to go up and this morning we had a very very big move not so big but very very strong we went like one thousand dollars above the current levels of uh, the levels of yesterday not current the levels of yesterday and I was at least expecting a bigger correction here, but it seems that my first level of support held the price and we had a reversal of the price action. So the count continues on the weekly chart. We are now on a green seven of nine. So expect a few more weeks of upside, probably to the range around the 56,000, which will be the next big resistance area. So I believe the 56 to 60,000 will be very, very strong resistance, probably even uh, with the probability of forming a third range boundary. So guys, take care, look at your charts, be focused because 56 to 60 could have a reversal of the price action and we could see a bit of a retracement there. But I will show you guys the levels in the next chart. So that's the, the weekly outlook for the weekly chart. The RSI continues to go up after just going sideways for one week. And this corresponds, of course, to that retracement we had last week. And the RSI continues to be bullish. The MACD continues to be very, very bullish here. We had a reversal on the MACD three weeks ago. We have now the blue line above the orange. We see the green bars increasing in size to the positive side. So the MACD on the weekly chart looks very, very good. This down here is a new indicator that I am testing right now. And I will, of course, give you more news about this. But for now, I'm just testing it. So I'm not going to enter into details. But I will as soon as possible. And when I have everything tested and the algorithm tested, I will tell you guys about this indicator down here. But this is just an oscillator that also gives me uh, a good idea when to, you know, basically around the zero level of this indicator when the flip happens when it goes to the upside uh, it gives you a good sign to buy when it goes to the downside like here it gives you a, a good sign to sell so i'm just testing it and see it how relevant this could be or uh, accurate this could be and then i will say if i will continue to use it and i will explain it better to you guys so that's it for the weekly chart. All the moving averages are in order. The shorter time frame is on top. The middle time frame is on the middle, and the lower, uh, sorry, the 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 slower, the slower moving averages is on the at the bottom, and this one too, the 200. So the 20, 50, 100, 200, all in order. That's a bullish sign on the weekly. The price action is above all moving averages. That's also a very very good bullish sign. The volume, however, continues to decrease. Uh, so this is not so good, but let's see where it takes us. But for now, the weekly chart continues to be the chart I like the most and the most bullish one. We still have a few numbers on the count. So we have the 8th and 9th, at least two more weeks after this week closes that I'm expecting a bit of a rise on the price action. Uh, so let's see if it takes us to the 56,000, as I said before, the first resistance after this uh, above this price level that we are currently in. So that's it for the weekly. Let's see the daily chart. So the daily chart shows us what happened today. This was the big move I was uh, talking to you guys. Uh, so this was about $1,500 since the opening of the candle. The 20 period SMA has been holding the price action which is very very good as i said before this trend line here and the conjunction of the 200 period uh, sma with the 220 period sma would be a very very good support that really happened so we had a low around 46000 and a half just a few days ago the first level of support that i said in my videos several times in previous videos I told you guys that the levels of support would be 46,000, 44 and 42, being 42 the strongest support possible uh, because of many, many factors in the past. So um, 
I guess that the 46,000 was strong enough to support the price. And we did not even go lower as I was expecting. Actually, I was expecting Bitcoin at least to break the first support line of 46 and go to 44, but it did not happen. So let's see if this momentum continues to the upside. We now have a green star and we are starting a new count on the daily. This candle is a green two of nine. So it's very, very possible that also following the lead of the weekly chart, we continue to the upside after we break this barrier around the top of the barrier being around 51,000, 51 and 500 possibly. So if we break this big resistance that we have been for so many days already trying to break, it's possible that we see a next move to the upside going for the next resistance around the 56. The RSI continues bullish, also pointing up. The trend line on the RSI is supporting the price. The last time we touched the support on the RSI was on the 20th of July. And since then, we have been going up and the RSI has been very bullish. The MACD on the daily, however, still has the blue line below the orange line. And we have a decrease on the bear momentum for the daily. So we had a small retracement there. And these bars on the red demonstrate that. But we are now uh, getting the gap to be smaller. So the, the gap is getting smaller here between the blue and the orange line. And very possibly on the next few days, we will have a cross here, a cross over to the upside of the blue line and everything will look much better. So that's it for the daily chart. I guess there's nothing, nothing really much to say. Uh, let me just go here to the Pro Indicators Framework. So as I've said also in previous videos, we are now reaching the top of the context. This will be a very, very difficult area to break. This is around the 51,000 and that's the limit, 51,000, 51,500. That's the limit for the resistance that started around 48. And if we can break this, then expect higher prices. However, if we are still rejected before breaking the 51,000, my area of speculation is here already waiting for that. And this is around 42 to 43,000. This is the area that I will get back into the market if we retrace. So if we are rejected around the 51,000 uh, and there's still a possibility and a, and a good probability that might happen, this is my area of, uh, this is my speculative area of entry and probably I will take another load of Bitcoin here to continue then expecting this to be the reversal of the price action area, having support on the moving average, just below 50% of the context here, the line, the 50% line of the context, which is this blue line, which is exactly the middle point between the resistance context and the support context here, the gray boxes. And in between the two of them, in between the 50% line and the simple moving average coming here on the pro indicators, this is my area of speculation. So if we come down, that's my plan to get into the market again in between 42 dollars and $43,000, expecting that this will support the price. And by then, of course, the support context will be higher. So uh, this is a good a good area for uh, speculative entries. And if you guys um, want to get back into the market, you have to wait. Of course, you are not going to FOMO into the market right now. We are just reaching a very, very prob uh, probable area of reversal. This is big resistance. This is not the time to get into the market right now. So no longs here. Uh, Probably some people with a bit more experience could have this area here above the resistance context as a take profit area. I will not recommend right now shorting this market. The bulls are in control and you should never short a market when the bulls are in control because we are going up and the probabilities of being wrecked with a short are very, very high. So I would not short the market right now, even if we reverse the price action going down to the 42 43 area i would i would rather prefer to get long on this market around this green rectangle so that's it let's just very very quickly show you the dollar so the dollar has been going down since yesterday we had a big drop here on the dollar we are now around 92.1 again dollar finding support on the three moving averages that are converging exactly to this point where the dollar stopped going down but 
it seems that the orange dashed line I plotted here uh, already a few, few long weeks ago uh, has been working. This was a very, very nice area of resistance and the dollar went back down and now we want to see what will happen. Will the dollar find support on the moving averages again and try to retest this resistance area or will the dollar break down and go to the support level that everyone wants to be broken which is the 90 to the 89 on the Dixie support. So let's see how that goes. I hope the dollar goes down. And in fact, the dollar going down has been helping Bitcoin to go up. So you guys know already how this works. Gold is doing nothing, just almost at the same place as yesterday. So sorry, Peter Schiff, but gold is really like a snail. It doesn't move. It's always on the same place. So it's very dull and I'm bored with gold. Although I, th I think that gold will have the lowest of the year around this level here, 1678. But right now gold is taking a long, long time to be able to break any resistances from these moving averages and it's doing nothing. So let's see how this evolves. S&P continues the same uh, synthetic move up as I described already in previous videos, nothing to see here. And let's take a look, just a quick look here at the last chart. And let me show you guys what was happening. So we had, oh, sorry, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to pull it to the left and you guys will see it better. So here it is. These, these were the levels I was, uh, I plotted some time ago and I said this will be support for Bitcoin if we are rejected around this red area of resistance. The red area goes from 48 to 51. And right now we were supported on the 46 and a half level for two times already, once here, once there. So I was actually expecting that the second time that we found support here around the 46 and a half, we would break this support coming back down to the 44, the same place where we found support here also two times, one here and another there. And I was expecting this to at least retrace to 44,000. I had some entry points here, but it didn't work. So it, uh, the price action reversed to the upside and we are now trying the last hill. We are now trying to conquer the last hill of this resistance, which is exactly the top of this red box around 51,000. And look, guys, look, the line is exactly there. So we are trying to uh, kill the last resistance we have in between this price level and 56,000 price level. So let's see how that goes. I will just end my analysis for today here. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this update today, Friday. Um, so this is what I had for you today. Um, I can't remember anything else which is really relevant, but don't forget guys, tomorrow, tomorrow we have the live stream around 3 p.m. Portuguese time, you know this already. And if you want to watch the live stream and participate in the chat and ask your questions, you are very, very welcome to join. So don't forget, tomorrow live stream, Saturday at 3 p.m. Portuguese time, you can just convert it to your own times if you are in different countries or different parts of the world. And I will be there expecting for you. So if you enjoy this content, gently touch the like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new or even if you are not new but you are not subscribed yet and share it with your friends. Don't forget the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video or start a live stream. So and now just before I leave you guys, I will just put the wise words as usual. All right, let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out there. Exactly, guys. Let's be really careful out there in the markets and I will see you again in the next one. Bye bye.